you know, for kids with um, phallocele, that is uh, the, the stuff in the belly, the intestines, and sometimes the liver is out, but covered by a membrane, not like gastroschisis. Those kids basically don't need intervention before birth. However, after birth, we will need to do an operation on your baby, and the timing of the operation depends upon the severity of the defect, and is a relatively complicated decision-making process that we will talk to you about throughout your pregnancy. Your initial evaluation will involve a couple of different things. Number one, you will receive a detailed ultrasound of the baby, looking at all the different organ systems to try and identify uh, whether or not any other abnormalities are present, and in addition to as get as much information as we can about the emphalocele itself. The next ultrasound that we typically recommend is a ultrasound called a fetal echo, which is a detailed ultrasound just of the heart. Um, following that information, once we have both the detailed ultrasound and the fetal echo, we can talk to you about the pros and cons of undergoing an amniocentesis if you have not already had that. An amniocentesis is just a way of looking at the chromosomes of the fetus and helping us to decide whether or not some other uh, chromosome abnormality exists. The next stage of your pregnancy is managed with ultrasounds looking at the growth as well as the emphalocele which we do about every four weeks or so and in addition we start non-stress tests at about 30 to 32 weeks gestation. Non-stress tests or antenatal testing is a way of assessing the baby's well-being. We know that with emphalocele as well as some other birth defects that there can be a higher risk of stillbirth. At these testing we measure the fluid around the baby and in addition we put a monitor on the on your abdomen and monitor the baby's heartbeat for approximately 20 minutes or so. And again, it's just a way of reassuring ourselves that the baby is doing okay. The next stage, final stage of your pregnancy is really the delivery. And in a, in a baby who's had an emphalocele detected, there's a couple different important things that need to be decided. The first is what kind of delivery should you have? Should it be a vaginal delivery or a C-section? And with some types of emphalocele, we actually do recommend a cesarean section. Why? Well, because there can be, particularly if an emphalocele is large, or if there are sensitive organs like the liver contained within it, we worry a bit that with vaginal delivery that those sensitive organs could be um, uh, hurt or um, compressed. And so um, once you get fairly far along in your pregnancy, we can tell you what we advise, a cesarean section versus a vaginal delivery. The next issue is the timing and therefore the place of the delivery as well. One of the key issues with emphalocele is that the baby does need to deliver at an intensive care nursery in a hospital that can deal with all of the needs of that newborn. At, here at UCSF, um, we um, can take care of a newborn with an emphalocele and perform all that is needed for that baby after delivery. The uh, timing of the delivery then is really centered around uh, guaranteeing as best we can that the delivery happens here at UCSF. For that reason, we would probably recommend delivery around one week before your due date. Um, and if that's by cesarean section, it'll be by a scheduled C-section then. If it's by a vaginal delivery, it would be an induction of labor. Um, and um, between those two issues, uh, the delivery from phallocele is important. Um, and at the same time, usually pretty straightforward.